Greetings in the love and in the light of our infinite prime creator, the divine grid programmer. Namaste. Namaskarap. What is religious trauma syndrome? RTS occurs when an individual struggles with leaving a religion or a set of beliefs that has led to their indoctrination. It often involves the trauma of breaking away from a controlling environment, lifestyle, or religious figure. In some settings, the symptoms of religious trauma can be similar to that of complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Religious trauma can be difficult to cope with. Religious trauma can stem from spiritual abuse, can impact individuals differently, and can have a devastating effect on someone's self-esteem, sense of self-worth, and identity. Religion can impact the way that we see the world and we know that to be true. Religion. If you investigate the word religion and understand its etymology, <clears throat> um, meaning, you know, as it, what it's based on in the Latin, um, origins of the word religion, which I'm looking up so I don't give you bad intelligence, but it comes from Latin, religare, to bind, Latin, religare, to bind, that is what it stems from, religion, the word religion has its origins in the Latin word R-E-L-I-G-A-R-E, -E, to bind. Okay, and do you know what a thing bound is? What its existence equates to when you're bound to something or to bind something? Okay, binding is a very serious method, a very serious way to imprison something, essentially. If I bind you or you have been bound, well, if it's done properly and thoroughly, you're not going anywhere until you are unbound. So those binds have been released. So think about that. Religion, my friend. Religion comes from the Latin word religare, R-E-L-I-G-A-R-E, -E, to bind. To imprison, essentially. And keep in mind, Look up religious trauma syndrome. Look up what that's all about, okay? And the reason why I'm introducing this uh, concept, this video offering with that um, point is because I want to share the knowledge of a certain topic and I don't wish to trigger a person with this word. Meaning that as soon as I use this word, it's going to have a whole range of, a whole host of responses to this simple word, depending on your background. Uh, I, you know, was raised Catholic, uh, six years of Catholic school, um, but constantly, you know, in the areas that I grew up, in the areas in the American South, and everywhere I've constantly been surrounded by Christianity uh, and to one degree or another you know fundamentalist Christian um, whom I've been attacked for, you know through one way or another for various um, you know ways things my simple existence based on the way I look at certain times you know or or books I was reading I have a whole history of religious trauma syndrome and dealing with this. So I'm quite sensitive. In fact, I'm hypersensitive to 
terms and words that that may be used and what it may trigger somebody and and it's and as soon as I would use the word in this video offering I you know sorcery the word sorcery um, I can only imagine the various mental associations that you my dear and esteemed and most honorable viewer might have with this word but I am here to perhaps create a new assemblage point for you with this term, with this word, with this concept, with this knowledge, to quote, to pronounce the word knowledge in homage to my, one of my spiritual mentors, Vasama Zulu Baba Kredu Mutwa, the great Zulu holy man, shaman, knowledge, sorcery. But if it conjures up, if this word sorcery conjures up you know, dark images in your mind, or somehow uh, puts a, you know, a, a, an unsettling connotation in your knowledge matrix because of this word sorcery, well then let this be some counseling for your religious fear-based trauma syndrome that you are suffering from. Because it's just a word, and moreover it's a concept of knowledge. Because sorcery is the mastery of intent, the search for total freedom. Sorcery is a state of awareness. Sorcery is the ability to perceive something which ordinary perception, which ordinary perception cannot. Sorcery is the power hidden within one's own being. It makes available to us energy fields previously inaccessible. Sorcery is the ability to use those energy fields. To use those energy fields. To, and to use something that has no knowledge of it. This divine grid. When I invoke, or when I say, give thanks to existence, grat display gratitude for being alive, for experiencing the energy of a new day when I wake up, and then and say, you know, uh, the infinite prime creator, the divine grid programmer. Because yes, sacred geometry and this creation is quite divinely conceived. And there is energy fields. And that is simply what sorcery is all about, is knowledge of those energy fields. Sorcery is the ability to perceive, to use those energy fields that are not employed in perceiving the ordinary world we know, the ordinary world of the digital matrix. A benefactor introduces the apprentice to the warrior's way, to living like a warrior with intent not to be a passive consumer of the digital matrix, to be constantly fed, you know, your beliefs and what it is, how you're supposed to act. No, you are to be a conscious co-creator in this new earth, all right? But a Living like a warrior, this is the glue that joins together everything in a sorcerer's world. Whenever a sorcerer interrupts the order of the world of consensus reality, the world of reason stops. The world of linear time, a new world opens itself to the seer. The main point of teaching is not inculcating data to amass facts, but moving another person's assemblage point. That's a very that, that phrase, those two words, assemblage point, they're very, there's very profound, profound realization within those two words to understand them, to begin to live your life from that perspective of being able to shift assemblage points, to understand your assemblage point, the one that you most commonly are operating from that sorcerers know that when an average person's inventory fails the per the person either enlarges his inventory or his world of self -reflect reflection collapses speaking of an inventory of your no lead the things that you operate under your operating system to use computer programming language or terms if self-reflection can collapse a door to the possibility of total freedom open. Sorcerers live in a world of will, a world of intent, 
Intent is focused. Willpower. It can move the person's assemblage point, the place where his ordinary consensus reality appears for him or her. When it moves, that reality is replaced by another. Intent creates edifices before us and invites us to enter them. Heightened awareness is like a springboard. From it, one can jump into infinity. There is no survival value in heightened awareness. Otherwise, the whole human race would be there. Knowledge could not be turned into word. It is there to be felt, to be used, but not to be explained. Sorcerers say death is the only worthy opponent we have. Death is our challenger, is our nemesis. We are born to take that challenge. Average men or sorcerers, sorcerers know a, a bit about it. The average men do not. The average citizen of the third dimension, the average uh, agent, system agent of the artificial hive mind. They're just little program NPCs running along doing their purpose. But a true person of knowledge understands that and goes beyond that. Life is the process by means of which death challenges us. Death is the active force. Life is the arena and in that arena there are only two contenders at any time. Yourself and death. All that exists. Some sorcerers are storytellers. Storytelling for them is not only the advanced runner that probes their perceptual limits, but their path to per perfection. Here are nine points of sorcery. The universe is an infinite agglomeration of energy fields resembling threads of light. These energy fields called the eagle's emanations radiate from a source of inconceivable proportions, metaphorically called the eagle. Human beings are also composed of an incalculable number of the same thread-like energy fields. These eagles' emanations form an encased agglomeration that man manifests itself as a ball of light the size of the person's body, a luminous and cosmic egg. Only a very small group of the energy fields inside this ball are lit up by a point of intense brilliance on the ball's surface. Perception occurs when the energy fields in that small group surrounding the point of brilliance extend to illuminate identical fields outside the ball. This is the person's assemblage point. The assemblage point can be moved, illumining new areas, and this is seen. The shift of the assemblage point reveals entirely new world, previously unforeseen, just as real as any other. Intent is the pervasive force that causes us to perceive. The aim of sorcerers is to reach a state of total awareness, to experience all possibilities available to man or woman or in between, anything in between, including an alternative way of dying. Keep in mind, reptilians are, uh, some of them are, what's the word I'm looking for? Both sexes, they're asexual or androgynous or they have both uh, organs, whatever, it's, it's just another, gender is just another assemblage point of knowledge that, it, that keeps everything divided and operating a certain way. A warrior, a man of knowledge, a person, a woman of knowledge, a, a divine container, <laughs> genetic vehicle of knowledge, is consciousness, has an unbending intent. Clarity of mind, respect, fear, wakefulness, and self-confidence. To become a person of knowledge is an unceasing process of labor and learning. The person of knowledge must be prepared to face the four enemies. Fear prevents one from ever becoming a man or woman of knowledge. To overcome it, feel fear, but don't let it stop you. Let it invigorate you, in fact. Courage, the de definition of courage is uh, not, not the absence of fear, it's recognizing your fear and, and proceeding to act appropriately without fear controlling any aspect of your action to be transcendent of fear. Clarity leads to hubris and arrogance. 
to overcome it, defy it, and recognize it as potential trap. Power leads to cruelty and loss of control. To overcome it, learn self-control and recognize power is not your own. Fatigue tempts one to rest and give up. To overcome it, become a person of knowledge. Resist the temptation. Luminous beings and the bubble of perception. We, the luminous beings, are born with two rings of power, but we use only one to create the world. That ring, which is hooked very soon after we are born, is reason, and its companion is talking. Between the two, they concoct and man maintain the world. So, just think a little bit about how much our perception of our world is controlled by words and the, the assemblage point of reason. And moreover, if the word sorcery, if this term, this word somehow triggers you and um, you're not comfortable with it or any aspect of uh, your database of knowledge, just perhaps consider that it is part of a trauma, a, of a type of experience with a certain organization or individual. But essentially, I want to impress upon you, my dear and esteemed viewer, that the word sorcery should be equated with knowledge, knowledge, knowledge of awareness, of conscious awareness, of self-empowerment. And that is a great thing. So I was hitting that subscribe button, staying tuned, gonna have more on this topic a little bit later. Um, anyway, we're just getting started, folks. Namaste, namaskaram.